Today, I'm going to be showing you 10 simple tips that will change your life. How to stay organized this school year in 2020. Number one, get a planner and actually use it. My junior high required us to have a planner, so they gave us all planners, and we were required to write in them for a grade. So that helped me get into the habit pretty quickly. When I wouldn't write in it, I wouldn't get the grade I wanted. So if you don't have that requirement, then you want to write in your planner each day what you have to do so that you can keep track of everything. But you don't just want to do that. Take this a step further by writing a summary of what you did in each class every single day. For example, on March 10th, you can write biology, learn parts of a cell and what each of them do. Discuss the difference between a cell wall and a cell membrane. Mr. Johnson also gave us the requirements for the cell project that's due April 10th. This way, you'll know exactly where to look in your notebook for the notes on specific topics, and you'll know when you got assigned certain projects or assignments. You'll have everything you need to set you up for a successful year. Number two, make assignments due the day before they're actually due. I know, kind of weird, right? But trust me, this will change the way that you do your assignments and how you'll feel when you're done. When you write your homework in your planner, make sure to write the due date the day before it's actually due so that you are absolutely guaranteed to have the assignment done on time and so you don't spend all night the night before finishing it. Also, some teachers even give extra credit for handing in assignments a day early, so it's a win-win. It's also pretty sweet to have your assignments finished early and seeing your classmates rush to finish makes you feel pretty good. Number three, save bookmarks in Google Chrome for each of your classes. If you don't have Google Chrome right now, download it on your laptop or desktop computer so that you can use bookmarks. I think you can do bookmarks on your phone too, but I'm going to give you a little tutorial on how to do it on your laptop. Go to your class website or Google Classroom page, click the star on the right of the search bar to bookmark the page, go to the folder drop-down menu and select choose another folder. Then select new folder at the bottom of the page, name that folder the name of your class, and now you can add several websites for that class into the folder if you need to. And do this for each of your classes. Doing this will ensure that all of your class websites are organized and that you can access them quickly and easily. Number four, write nice, neat looking notes. I know what you're going to say. You don't have the time in class to write neat notes because it just goes too fast, the teacher talks too fast, and you just need to write it messy and quick so you get everything down that you need to know. I get that, 100%. And I'm not a very neat writer myself, and when I'm rushed, it's definitely much worse. So what you have to do is rewrite your notes when you get the chance. This can be at lunch when you're just sitting around, or when you get home, just rewrite your notes, make them nice and neat, so that when you go to study them later, you actually want to look at them because they are pleasing to look at. Here's a couple extra tips on note taking. Use bullet points so that your notes don't just look like a giant block of words. Make sure to use colorful pens or highlighters to make important points of your notes stand out. And let me know in the comments if you guys want more note-taking tips in a future video. Last thing on note-taking, writing notes over again neater actually gets the information into your head. So you're actually studying while rewriting the notes. Number five, set small goals for big projects. Sometimes really big projects that are due in a month can seem really overwhelming. This is why it is nice to set little small goals along the way that you can reach so that you can one, ensure that your project will be done on time, and two, just feel accomplished every time you get a little part done. While it's obviously not good to wait till the very end to complete a project, it is also not very good to do it right at the beginning and get it done the first week when you have four weeks to do the entire project. This might not seem like a problem to many of you, but it definitely is, because your project can seem rushed to the teacher when you could have spent more time putting in quality work. 
Also, you just spent unnecessary time doing a lot of work that you didn't need to do, that you could have done in a span of four weeks, but you chose to cram it in to one week for no real reason. Also, if you have something like four weeks to do a project, take all of that time to come up with the best ideas to put in your project and put in all the heartfelt work you can into the project to make it the best that you can. If you do it all at once, you might just become tired by the end and the work that you do at the end might just kind of end up looking sloppy. It's best to spread it out and take your time with it. Number six, have a homework routine. This is why the planner is so important. Not only should you write the day the homework is due, you should also write when you plan to do the homework so that you don't see the due date and you're like, eh, I'm just gonna do it later. No, set a routine, set a day you're going to do the homework so that you're guaranteed to get it done and so you have other time to work on all of your other assignments. If you're going to junior high, then you know that you're going to have six or so classes to keep track of, whereas you just had one the year before. That is a big change and you need to make sure that you're keeping track of every single one of your classes because the teachers are not going to baby you as much as they did in elementary school. I know you've heard that a lot before, but you are hearing it again from me. If you are in high school, you also have six or so classes to keep track of. And unlike junior high, the teachers might not mention the assignments more than once, and they might just be posted on Google Classroom or on the whiteboard for you to take note of. The teacher might not even mention the due date. They might just put it somewhere for you to find and for you to write down and be responsible of yourself. This is also why the bookmarks that I mentioned earlier are important because this way you can see the class websites or Google Classroom or anything that the teacher puts, you will be able to find super easily so you can write the assignments down in your planner. Number seven, don't wait until the night before to study for a test. Now, I know this one seems obvious and the teachers tell you all the time, but why do they tell you that? Wouldn't the information just be fresh in your mind from the night before so you'd be ready to take the test the next day? Nope. While you don't want to study way before the test and just forget the information later, you also don't want to study the night before because your brain needs time and practice to actually keep the information in. If you study the night before, all that will happen is that you will just forget at least the majority of the information, if not all of it, that you studied the night before. So all of your effort would just go to waste. What you should actually do is spread out your study time to at least once a week. If say your test is in three weeks, study once a week in the beginning two weeks and then study maybe twice in the last week before the test. Once in the beginning of the week and once the night before the test. And when you study the night before the test, it shouldn't be a cram session. It should be a really quick review. And it should not be stressful at all because you already reviewed the information a number of times. So you should really be prepared for the test the night before. Number eight, have a separate notebook or folder for each class. It may sound a little silly, but I organized all of my folders for high school in rainbow order, so I always knew which color folder was associated with each class. Like red, first period, orange, second period, yellow, third period, etc. Having a separate notebook or folder for each class will guarantee that you will not misplace your assignments because you will know exactly where they all are. Having a separate folder or notebook for each class will guarantee that you will not misplace your assignments because you'll know where each of them are. I actually recommend having a folder and a notebook for each class because you can keep the handouts in the folder and the notes in the notebook. This will guarantee that you have places to put everything and nothing will get wrinkled or misplaced. Or another option is that you can get a notebook that has a folder in the front so you can put the handouts there. Just make sure the dimensions of the notebook fit normal sized paper so you don't have to fold it. Number nine, create a table of contents for every class notebook. 
This way, you will know exactly where each of your notes are, and you won't be stressing while trying to study the night before a test, flipping through the notebook, and trying to find the definition of each part of a cell in your biology notebook that has over a hundred pages worth of notes that you have to look through to find it. Just write a table of contents, and then you'll know exactly where to find your notes. Also, this might seem a little obvious, but make sure you number all of your pages in your notebook before you write the table of contents so that writing the table of contents is easier. And that brings me to the last, but honestly the most important organization tip for school, and that is have a consistent sleep schedule. Having a good sleep schedule sets you up for a successful school day because your body will feel ready to wake up at the crack of dawn if you train it to do so, while also getting seven to eight hours of sleep every single night. I personally use the bedtime feature in the clock app on my iPhone to set my bedtime every night. I scroll to the time I want to go to sleep and the time I want to wake up, and it'll tell me how many hours I sleep if I set that time. You can also pick to set the alarm for only the weekdays so you don't accidentally wake up at 6 a.m. on the weekend. Also, make sure to set your time correctly, p.m. for going to sleep and a.m. for waking up. I learned that lesson the hard way. The bedtime app will also remind you 15 minutes before your bedtime so that you know when to wrap up your work and get to sleep. And that just about does it. I really hope these organization tips help you as much as they helped me throughout my high school years. If you like this video, subscribe to me for more of this kind of content and turn on that notification bell so that you can always know when I post a new video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Bye!